Hello there, welcome to the 6th devlog on Labyrinthophobia. I'm Digital Kingdom Editor, or DKE for short. In this devlog, I'll go over what I've accomplished since the last devlog, and what I'm hoping to achieve by the next one. Timestamps are on screen now if you'd like to jump to a particular section in this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. Two new mazes have been fully created. The first is a darker maze that can be a bit hard to navigate due to how dark it is at some points. I may need to add more lights into the maze depending on what my alpha testers say once I get it to them. But let me go ahead and take you around the maze real quick just to give you a feel of what the maze is like. The second maze is a hedge maze, like in real life. It's a maze in which the walls are made from bushes. I'm thinking I may need more lights for this as well, but I'm not entirely sure. But that's something for you as well as my alpha testers to decide. Let me go ahead and take you around the hedge maze so you can see what I'm aiming for with this maze. I've implemented the Steam Overlay API, as this game is going to be released on Steam at some point in time. Just by pressing Shift and Tab, you can bring up the Steam Overlay when playing the game, and I'm glad that it was very simple to do and not as complex as I thought it would be. I've made a multiplayer lobby that mostly works, and I'll demonstrate that now. I've got two game instances currently going, and this is to simulate what happens on each side, being the server and client side of things. When you click on the multiplayer button, it'll take you to the lobby menu. From here, it'll automatically scan for all available sessions that have been created. Since I haven't created a lobby, it won't find anything on either game here. However, when I create a session, a public game will be available for people to join. So when I click create lobby, it will open up a lobby and put me into the start room of the game. When I go over to the other game here and click refresh, we now see that the game I created is available to join and it shows some basic information about the lobby, like ping, player name that's hosting the lobby, as well as the number of people that are currently in that lobby, as well as the max amount of players that can join that lobby. The ping time is something that I'll have to look into as well because I don't think that's correct, but let's ignore that for now. When I press join, it'll take a short time, but eventually it'll load me into the game that I created and now we can play together. On this note, you can also see that above the characters, we have our Steam name displayed over each of the characters. I still have to fully test to see if it actually does correctly display Steam names for other players instead of just myself, but at this point in time, it does seem to be working correctly, so that's pretty good. I had to update the shop layout a little bit, as I realized that there was going to be a potential issue in the future if I didn't make this correction now. So let me explain. There's something inside of Unreal Engine called the Nav Mesh Bounce, and it allows for AI to move around a certain set area. My plan was to make this Nav Mesh Bounce super big, so it would cover all the potential play area, instead of having it to move around and do a bunch of more tedious and complex work with it. However, with it being super big, this also means that the shop would also be spawned inside of the navigation area, and this is not ideal. Anywhere that there's a green zone on the ground, that means that the AI can navigate and move towards it, and as this is a safe zone, this is very bad. I didn't want enemies to be able to somehow worm their way into the shop because it's a safe zone for players, so to fix this, I just made the shop a little higher off the ground than the mazes would be, and I added a small ramp that goes into the shop, as well as a ramp that exits the shop. This makes it to where the shop is now a place where the enemy AI can no longer go, so that issue is solved. I was also able to add in timers that ensure that all players are in the maze once the start game and shop levers have been pulled. As you can see, once I pull the lever in the start room to start the game, up on the top left, I got some logs printing that show the actual countdown of a timer that's happening. This won't show in the actual game, but I'm showing it now just so you have a visual representation of it. The timer is for 10 seconds, and once it reaches zero, if the player is not inside of the maze, it will immediately teleport you inside of the maze and close the door behind you. This mechanic is so you don't have players trying to run back to the safe area or find some kind of strategy that abuses the safe areas that I've provided. This also works inside of the shops as well, so we pull the lever inside of the shop, the countdown begins, and if we just stay here for 10 seconds without entering the maze, it will go ahead and just teleport us to the start of the maze, and a wall appears behind us, so we can't try to run back to the shop area. If you're already inside of the maze and you're far enough, you won't get teleported, so this is more of an incentive to not lag behind and make sure that you're not abusing the safe zones. I'll probably have to add in some kind of ready up system so people aren't just flipping the switch immediately and trolling, but that'll come when I start really working on the multiplayer aspect of this game. I feel like this devlog has the most work on it, and I'm very proud of it. So let's move on to the goals for the next devlog. Getting the randomized maze spawning fully working. Since there's more mazes that have now been added in, I need to make sure that everything is being randomly spawned in and is being done so correctly. There's kind of a lot to account for, so the process of doing this may take a while. Add in two more enemies. As we currently have two relatively strong and dangerous enemies, I want there to be two weak enemies. I feel this will help balance the gameplay a little bit and help to make it to where you really don't know if the enemies you're stuck with are easy to deal with or extremely hard to deal with. Before we end today's devlog, 
I want to let you all know that we've got a Discord server for Labyrinthophobia. The server is the official Digital Kingdom server that Digital Kingdom and I have, and a channel for Labyrinthophobia has been made as part of the server, so all Labyrinthophobia stuff will be in that channel. If you want the latest updates and notifications on Labyrinthophobia, as well as be able to talk to me in a more direct way about the game, I highly encourage you to join. Since these devlogs are usually outdated by a couple weeks by the time they're released, this is a good way to get more real-time information. Link is down in the description. A huge chunk of progress was made in this devlog of Labyrinthophobia. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on all things with Labyrinthophobia. My name is Digital Kingdom Editor, DKA for short, and I'll see you in the next one.